Good morning, YouTube. Thanks for joining. Um, it is Monday. We made it another week. Weekend went by way too fast. Uh, it is March 11th. So yesterday we sprung forward on the uh, time of day. So didn't sleep well last night. Um, I was talking to Beth about it this morning. We need to have a national holiday for the Monday after the time changes. So today we got a busy day um, per usual. It's supposed to be nice out. I think it's supposed to be almost 70 again today, which we'll take it. Uh, we're going to be heading up to Rockton Cemetery. We have a cremation grave to dig for tomorrow. So we have a cremation burial tomorrow. Um, I've got a decent sized monument to set. Um, we also do other things for the cemetery. So they have, they have four or five VA markers that came in over the winter and they've got the authorization to set one of them so we're going to do that for them we got to bring uh, a precast concrete foundation for that uh, and then i've got two other flush markers that i've got to set so pretty uh pretty busy day um, i just looked up the dimensions of the cremation vault um, so i'm going to need to dig a 20 inch by 20 inch you know i'm probably two foot deep hole for that cremation uh, kind of excited, so tomorrow is the burial for that, and I did buy a new um, cremation table, um, kind of a setup device, setup table for the urn um, to sit on for the actual burial. It's going to look much nicer. Um, we were using one that the cemetery had, and it was essentially a folding, you know, coffee table that you'd put out for Thanksgiving for family or something. And it was just a couple of times it was windy out there and just real rickety and shaky, so we ended up. Uh, buying one ourselves to use for the burial so uh, we'll have that set up tomorrow I'll show you that uh, so I've got to load up I've got the truck started I'm gonna let it warm up a little bit it's still chilly this morning in the low 30s so let it warm up a little bit and then I've got all of that stuff to load still so um, another thing weighing on my mind we had crappy crappy internet service over the weekend so I'm glad I wasn't uploading any videos for you guys uh, so they're going to come out today between 1 and 5, so there's a chance I'm going to have to run home, which is not super close. Um, and then a week from today, I'm going to try to video this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, but I'm going to start off videoing it anyway. So a week from today, I leave to go down to Alberton, Georgia. So um, next week, it doesn't start till Thursday, but next Thursday starts the School of Hard Rocks down in Albert Alberton, Georgia. So um, we'll be getting prepared at the end of the week, get, make sure I have everything to bring down there, um, and we'll start that process. So uh, I think it's a nine-hour drive my first night and then s some other hours the next day uh, to get into Alberton. So we're going to try to bring you along for that. Hopefully they don't mind uh, if I video. It was, uh, it was fun videoing the one up in Cold Springs, Minnesota over the winter. So... Hopefully they'll allow that. Um, so that's about it for this morning. We're going to go ahead and load up and get ready for Rockton. So we'll bring you along here shortly. Well, we made it. So, made it a while ago. I had some phone calls from some families. So, when uh, so I run a couple cemeteries. So, had a couple of phone calls regarding questions uh, to one of the cemeteries that I run. So, had some legality questions regarding the reservation of lots when an owner's deceased so that took a little while to explain hey 
So I don't know how many of you out there do what I do, but anybody that has a memorial out in a cemetery knows birds find your memorial. <laughs> They're like little bullseyes on them. So this is another foundation that we put in in the fall of last year. So this is a five foot granite foundation that are four and a half foot wide, jet black, two inch margin, base is gonna go on and then that stone's obviously going on the base. We do, I would say, I haven't looked at the numbers or anything, but I would, yes that we do black and probably black and gray colors the most out of all of our granite color options surprisingly a lot of people so i hear the question you know some people will think you know the darker the stone the more expensive it is and uh that's not the case black black granite ends up falling you know it's imported so black granite quarries in india um and even though it has to travel across an ocean it's probably in the bottom third of our granite cost by color where gray is our least expensive color i guess both of these are black so that's what I've learned over the years. Um, granite costs vary uh, for the majority, I guess, of a reason based off of the amount of usable stone that's in the quarry. So what I've always been told is that your gray stones, um, so where I'm going next week down to Elberton, Georgia, there's a Georgia gray. So that piece of stone like 94% of the block that's quarried is usable which makes that stone very one of the probably the least expensive stone and then for your kind of standard colors there's one color from Norway it's it's Norwegian blue pearl and I've always been told that it's almost the exact opposite like 94 percent of the blue pearl block is uh i guess what we call waste granite so it's got you know different hairline cracks and and fissures and things in it so it's not usable they'll use it for other things but it's not monumental grade so when you're looking at six percent of a forty thousand pound block uh, it's a lot of work to get that 6% so that granite for our standard colors is the most expensive. There are some small quarries around that are more expensive than Blue Pearl, uh, but we don't use them very often. There's a stone out of, I think it was new york you can check on me with the core you can look for it but it's called stony creek and it's a domestic granite quarry that i had to get some estimates for over the winter and it is way more expensive than even blue pearl so i'm not sure why but it's a small quarry we have quite a bit of it in our cemeteries here but just based off their website in that it looks like they're it looks like they're more focused on building materials than they are monumental pieces of stone so and when i say expensive just to give you an idea my my cost for it was i was looking for a piece to go under a bronze plaque and it was a big piece i think it was like i mean it was darn near it was bigger than that three by two precast piece of concrete um i don't remember the dimensions 
it was for a large bronze plaque i think it was you know it's probably somewhere like 32 inches wide by like 36 inches something like that and that piece of stone um i want to say it was close to six thousand dollars <laughs> just for that so uh the family the family had that underneath all of their older bronzes but decided to go with something that wasn't an exact match um i have the piece of granite at the office already that they decided to go with not an exact match but um you know the piece of granite that they got was probably you know maybe 800 bucks thousand bucks instead of six thousand it was a huge difference so there are some quarries that for whatever reason just have a much more expensive cost to them so doesn't have anything to do with the color um, in some cases you know the quarry location will have an effect so uh, President Trump put into effect Chinese tariffs so anything that we get you know there's a gray there's some pinks uh, that are quarried out of China and all of those we have the not only do we have the cost of the stone we have the cost of shipping the stone but then on top of all of that we pay an additional 25% because of the tariffs so you know that makes the Chinese market 25% more expensive than it used to be and it's still in a lot of cases less expensive but it went from almost always one of the least expensive to now right in there kind of in the um, same areas there are a lot of our stones when you have to add that tariff tree so uh, what do I need don't need water looking for my joint type I already got it out so we'll so I'm gonna seal this base down I'm gonna wash it and then uh, once I get that all done I won't bore you guys I'll come back in we'll put the top on and I don't know so where are my pins at? This cemetery has pins in the ground. So this is the pin for that grave. That's the pin for this grave. And then I'm in a walkway. So I should be reading the stone from the walkway. So I just answered that question. So we'll see you in a minute. All right, so we got the die off the back rack. Getting ready to set it on top of the base here. This is a pretty good sized die. I think it's three and a half foot wide and I don't know about two foot tall. So this one just like most of our memorials will have six inches on the sides and three in the front. Uh, this one I do have granite vases for, so yeah, I do need to make sure I've got the room needed for those, which is generally, so I got five and three quarters, and exactly six, so I'm eighth of an inch. So we'll go to five and seven eighths which is not much movement uh, so again it's a lot easier to move i got most of the weight on the truck still so that one we're gonna have to move a little bit that was close One of the things I haven't done yet with this tape measure is take off that metal clip. A lot of your construction guys will wear this on their belt or tool belt. And for me, 
they just add a potential risk of scratching stone. So I like to take them off. Alright, that's lined up. Set that down. All the big stuff's out of the way. Get this put back up. So I'm going to go ahead I'm going to put this uh, boom away and exit out of the section like I usually do. Just to not have my trucks in here. So, And again, it's windy out so I was going to put my tripod up and do some time lapse of this but I'm afraid it will just fall over. Maybe we'll try it on another one but... If there is wind noise, my apologies once again, I'm sure there is, so um, so I'll pull all this out, bring you back when I'm sealing this one down. Alright, truck's out of the way, and uh, I forgot to point out, there's something for Christian, my fellow monument buddy. Um, we're pretty close to the Wisconsin border, so we end up getting a lot of requests for Packer stuff. <laughs> um, so this memorial we, we consider a pre-need memorial and you know situations are different when you're working with a family on you know sometimes what you say in that so I remember with these folks and a lot of times situations like this I'll joke around and say we can do a Packer logo but it doubles the cost of the stone. <laughs> I tell them that you know if we were to put a bear logo on there it'll make it less expensive but if we do anything Packers you're looking at double the cost. Uh, and while we're talking about this stuff, so I know this is something that Christian and Kurt don't necessarily like to do with the white on here. So this family wanted to leave most of the stone polished, so they went with the skin cut letter white highlight litho. So everything's white on here. It will fade over time. Um, and then in this one, they wanted to do colored flat carving, so the design work. So you've got the yellow, the red, and the green over here. That will also fade. So they are well aware of that. Um, we talked to them about it. It can be added over time. Um, and it'll be, this one will probably last quite a while. Uh, the sun uh, in this section is going to be generally at the back of the stone. And that's what ends up fading your paint uh, a lot. The acid rain will too, but a lot of times when you get that sun, uh, it doesn't... Uh, it still lasts a long time, but it'll be, you know, what's fading that for the majority of the time. So, um, lithochrome paint doesn't have a warranty on how long it's going to last, but I've seen pieces, you know, 30, 40, 50 years old that still has it in it. Uh, we have a really nice piece. Uh, one, one of these days I'll show you. It's actually on our website. Uh, the family last name's Quam. It's a fully hand etched monument that has colored etchings on it and that thing's been there for i don't know since the late mid to late 90s still looks like it was you know just set yesterday so uh but again that one's back is facing the sun the majority of the time so i am going to wipe all this down first get it all clean so i take pictures of all of this stuff and send it back to the office and I want it to look good for that but I want it to have enough time to dry out before I do that too I'm going to scrape some of that so the only problem I have with black granite is that the best this stone's going to look is while it's in our office it's so shiny and so reflective it just shows everything so how I do feel black's very kind of it's a very stately look and it's um, I mean it's obviously very nice it just tends to show dirt and debris pretty quickly and it obviously can just be clean but um, I feel like you know the first time a 
mower comes by and throws grass on it and sticks to it and it shows it for quite a while. Classy. That's the other term I was thinking. Stately. Classy. So again, we've got another quarry picture or sticker. I'll get that scraped off. And then I saw some the white stuff on the other side with some adhesive glue. So we'll take that off. But we don't want it on there. Alright, now it's time. You know what I should have done? <laughs> I should have dropped the should have dropped the vases off. So we'll put our spacers in. Gonna use pennies again. Put them in the corners. I suppose on a die this wide you could put two more in the middle but the bottom's cut pretty flat it should be fine we got a small bit here just use this to do two sticks grab a big chunk I don't know if you can see that, that little red bit right there. It comes from the paint off my sling. So when I have the sling over the top and it's, you know, waving in the wind, it pops the paint off. And you can really see it on the black stuff when it does that. Big. Oh. <laughs> So obviously I put water in this joint that it you know helps it from drying out so fast. My problem is I left it in the truck over the weekend. So it's in the 30s again right now. Doesn't feel too bad, but this water is stone cold. I don't know if they went and watched it or not, but there's uh, one cemetery in town that does not do anything to seal their stones down. They just put the dye on top of the base and basically say a prayer that it doesn't move. <laughs> so I had a chat with them about the importance of using something in the old days it was lead nowadays setting compound or joint tight whatever you want to refer to it as so in one of the other videos i was talking about you know our black granite and how Usually when I display it in the at the office, I've got an all polished piece. I think on the last video or the one previous to that, you saw us set a polished two die in black. A little bit more rare for us. Just because usually people, once I explain to them that this is all sealed and you're not gonna get much of that lichen and moss type material buildup. I mean, I've seen it before, but it's a lot harder for it to attach to a polished surface once you talk about that type of thing. Typically, the family will go with the all polished stone. So, all right, we're gonna go ahead and set this stone down onto the joint tight. So again, I've got my oak uh, two by ones 
Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna lift this end of the die up, hold on to it whilst I do that. I'm gonna grab that board, I'm gonna push that joint tight in, switch hands carefully, push that joint tight in. And then I like to hold the die and pull out as quick as you can. And it just drops right down onto that joint tight. It acts as a buffer between the two pieces. I'm still looking at a device that lifts this up. A device that kind of like sits here and it holds onto it on the sides and lifts up so it, it eliminates this. But that device is like, I have to look again, but it's like 500 bucks. Five or 600 bucks, something like that. Um, I'm gonna take that off. Um, where this is probably $2. <laughs> so it's like, the other one will be nice and I'm thinking about it if I have to do work, you know, where the piece has to be up an extended amount of time. Um, it would be handy, but for doing it for that long, and then pulling out these work pretty good all right so that stone is essentially set we'll let that sit on there so that will squeeze down on that joint tight until the stone hits those pennies or spacers it'll squish the joint tight out i'll go around clean it all up in the meantime i got some more cleaning to do so I'll take that, so that's from the quarry too, that writing. Take that off, I got a little bit more stencil glue on the base there. Take that off, uh, give it time to set down and then I've got granite vases to attach so I'll bring it back when I put those vases on and show you the final product. All right, so we're all done. Got all the stuff packed up, got the vases on. I have not yet cut the joint tight. Again, when it's a little chilly out, it takes a little bit longer for that weight to squish down. I did cut it on the sides before I put the vases on. It's hard to get in there after the vases are on. So I got, you can see a little bit on the front there. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, on the back, I got a couple, three spots where it's squishing out. So we'll trim all that up. But this is another one completed for this family and that'll be the last time I have to uh, bring the truck in so all my other stuff is small ish the three by two precast concrete's the biggest piece but I'll just boom all of that stuff into the gator and then I just take it off by hand so so I'll park back over by my trailer uh, go find out where those things go um i just saw these flags and i know we set this monument for this family and then they were a little worried that we also put it in that foundation and they were a little worried that they were too close but man so the cemetery apparently came out and put these flags up i mean we are exactly centered in between the flags and centered right where that center flag is and then you know these two flags would be where that graves at so i mean it's exactly where it should be so hopefully that's okay it's fun to look around here i just had a family out uh, so just look around here we did that stone and that stone and that stone we did that one um, this was one we did years ago that was in our office for sale obviously um, and uh, the family was just here so I didn't, I didn't video for a little while but I just love the way that came out looks beautiful she'll have her information added at a later date I know going this way is windy We still on yep so i wanted to walk over here these are two of my favorite let's see if i can block the wind these are 
probably one of my favorite stones and it's because of the etchings now these are facing the sun so that's gonna be a little bit of an issue but so that that is hand etched and hand colored and then on this side for her that's hand etched and hand colored and I just love the detail of that kitty it just turned out absolutely amazing we did this one too so this is uh, that's Barry Gray from Vermont that one still looks really good so we also did this one right here this this young man who passed this is actually one of the first ones I did out in this cemetery 2013 I remember we set that in a pouring rain and then we had done one down here so we did that one and then we did this one which was kind of based off that last one I just showed you kind of stylish wise and some cool music notes then on the bottom and then I thought it always looked cool on the back here we had we added piano keys so kind of cool let me know if uh, like walking around the cemetery and you know doing just kind of checking up on and seeing different pieces that uh, that we set let me know if that interests you it's to me I love walking around and looking at them it's just uh, you get a lot of cool ideas and just double checking we set this one last year so I always like to look and see if any of that joint tights squeezing out we had to draw a custom graphic for the back of this that was kind of cool uh, so we we have these styled stones at our office but they're they're uh, companion size so we had to have this one custom done smaller for a single grave so fun to look back on um, so I'm gonna hop in the truck go back over to the trailer and try to find out where these other memorials are going I do have to run to the cemetery maintenance shop and pick up a VA marker to set for them so we'll do all that here in a little bit all right so I'm out here uh, this cemetery has a section where all the markers are flat to the ground so this is where our two by one flush granite marker goes it's going to look similar to that except for it's black and it goes right here where this graves at so you know a lot of times you can't set a marker on a recent burial but in this case the markers are away from the grave space so the marker will be lined up with these two you know which will be somewhere where it's still on the grass uh, so it'll be fine to install this one if I was gonna put this stone on you know where the graves at it would uh, the state of the grave right now it would definitely settle down so we wouldn't want to do that but this one being off in here will be perfectly fine so I'm gonna lay all this output string line down um, you've seen me do this a thousand times I was gonna put up our tripod I brought it with it's not too bad right now but we get some decent gusts of wind I have a feeling it would just fall over so I'm gonna string all this out get it all dug out I'll go get the marker uh, bring it back and do the installation uh, and we'll show you you've seen it a thousand times so I'll show you what it looks like once it's all completed
right, so this one's pretty well set. Um, <laughs> side note, I just sent a text message of that front end loader to my township supervisor and uh, asked him if I could get one of those to dump garbages out at the cemetery I run. They're, they're tooling around picking up garbages and putting them in that giant front end loader. <laughs> uh, he said as long as it was in my budget to buy myself. <laughs> um, but just got this one done. Um, obviously I need to get some more dirt. Uh, but I do have another uh, memorial to set and I have that cremation to dig so I'll have plenty of dirt later. I'm going to go ahead and take a picture, send it over to Beth so that she has it for our records. And then uh, probably going to go on to um, installing the VA marker. I, I'm not sure where. I'll have to look and see where that one goes. I know it goes above ground. It might be in that section I was just in. So we'll check on that and then get the 3x2 installed. And uh, after that 3x2 precast concrete's installed, we'll go ahead and pick up the marker, uh, bring it over there and get it sealed down with our setting compound. So that'll be the next, uh, now that we're done with this. So we'll go do that and I'll show you that. All right, so we just made it to where our VA marker goes. Uh, so I got this map. It's like, it's kind of like that, but so the cemetery gives me this, and this is actually a cremation burial that Aiden and I did uh, back in the fall, I think. I think there was snow on the ground, maybe. Um, but we're going next to the Lovelace family, and this is interesting right here. So, I, mean, I don't know obviously who would have done that and when it was done, but that is made out of concrete. <laughs> so. You can see it's really hard to read and it's Jesse Lovelace passed away in 1932 and it says at rest here um, mother down here this will continue to deteriorate and erode and pieces will pop off I'm not gonna mess with it too much um, interesting though I don't know if I've ever seen one out of made out of concrete so this is where we're going to go and I don't know how much it comes across on video but this is a pretty good sloping hill here. Um, so either the back of our foundation is going to be at ground grade here, you know up here somewhere and then the front of the foundation is going to be you know essentially out of the ground right there. or this will be at ground grade here and then the back of the precast will be you know down will be a ledge I don't know I don't know what the best look will be I mean we did that with this one so we we did this stone a couple years ago and we set it so that the back was flush with the ground the front obviously has an exposed lip uh, if I remember correctly, these are family members of that gentleman. So I might do the same thing, have the back at grade, have it level. The front will be up by the ground, so got a little bit to string off by. So I'll get this going and I'm in the older part of the cemetery now. So the, the, the river channel, the man-made channel is over there. You can kind of see the water in the background. I love walking back there uh, and then the river is actually over there so this is the I don't know when this was established but we don't do a whole lot over here so I wasn't expecting to be over here and I've never noticed this before so one of the things I like doing if I am walking around in the cemetery that we just talked about on the other side is looking at markers I don't know how many of you are familiar with these I don't know if you'll be able to hear this. This is a metal monument. So there, so this uh, mother died in 1890. And 
this says 1886 so that's what I'm familiar with seeing these is the late 1800s I have seen them for sale in Sears and Roebuck calendars from back then I've got some ads of that uh, also there was a specific company I can't remember their name that actually made these and they actually hold up very well you know for being 140 years old whatever it is it uh, looks pretty good looks like there's a piece of looks like sandstone or marble as the base down at ground grade I wonder if that's always been there it's kind of weird to have a stone so close but you don't see a whole lot of them uh, we have one of them at the cemetery that I run it's the first time I've seen this one uh, but let me know what you think is that pretty cool as far to my knowledge they don't make them anymore so this actually says American White Bronze Company Chicago Illinois so this just came from a couple hours from here very cool huh white bronze company it'd be neat to uh, see some research on that if anybody has any uh, information on that company and you know kind of the history of them feel free to leave a link or something down in the comments that'd be cool So we just got done doing this uh, VA marker. I'll show it to you. It's a good example of one. So you can see the lip I left down here. I think that's pretty good. Um, with VA markers, this is a granite one, obviously. They use a uh, sawn or steeled gray marker they deep v cut the engraving and then they use uh, the black lithochrome paint to give it the contrast so oh, pretty good example of that you can tell i am out of shape <laughs> so you're going from having two people digging all that out to just uh one and then directly after winter definitely showing so here's another VA granite memorial looks like from the 70s so the only issue with them is that they being all sawn or all steel they get dirty pretty quickly and that one's that one's uh, under a tree so more material to get into the stone so um, I've got to dump this dirt that's in the back of the gator uh, but if you remember, I needed some extra dirt for that first marker, so I'm going to go put that dirt around that marker, and then I'm going to go dump this, and then uh, it's about 1 o'clock already, so I might have something to eat for lunch. Uh, and then after I dump that, I've still got that cremation hole to dig, so more digging, more sweating. I had my t-shirt on a little bit earlier, so... Uh, I've got somebody stopping to see me there, so I know it's a, a customer that's out here, so she'll probably pull around and chat. So I'm going to talk to her, and then uh, we'll get on to getting on. All right, well, I just got home, so um, at the end of the day, I was digging that cremation. You guys saw that. Um, I had two or three people stop by to, uh, to talk. Um, I think a lot of people see out you're working in a cemetery and they you know wonder if you work for the cemetery so nice day out people decided to stop and chat and talk and the last family that stopped and talked was the family of the first uh, the first marker that I set today so that bigger black monument uh, so we went over them uh, they they absolutely love it um, but they wanted to know if it could be turned around to be read the other direction so um, I asked the guy who runs a cemetery and that's not a problem we can switch it. it it's right now it's facing the way that it should be in that section but he doesn't have a problem if we flip it so so I will I told him I would do that in the morning so it's always uh 
fun doing that. You guys that do this know about that. So, uh, and I get to do it by myself. So I got to rock it and get sticks underneath it. Um, it's a little bit of a taller piece, so that's going to be interesting. Uh, but we'll get that done in the morning uh, before the burial, and then uh, we just got done with another flush marker. So uh, we requested a mat for the location of that. So I'll get that set in the morning as well. Um, so that is going to be it. So. If, if you're still here thanks for watching thanks for uh again all the new subscribers it's awesome appreciate uh, all of you enjoy uh doing this and um we will uh i don't know i'm probably gonna video tomorrow too i'm gonna try to video a couple of times this week so that i've got some videos to go out over the next two weeks i'll be gone so uh we'll see what tomorrow brings and we will see you on the next one